Hello everyone. Nice to see you. So we're going to be talking a little bit about music. Uh, I think a few of you might be aware of the concept. Various notes coming out into the air and you can dance to it and sing, stuff like that. And uh, my name is Oscar. I've been with Spotify for nine years. Uh, the first seven years I was the, the CTO of Spotify and the last two years I've been running the personalization and discovery efforts at Spotify. So uh, first of all I want to just go through who we are and, and what we do. So uh, at Spotify uh, we're obviously a, a music streaming company. Uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of what we do. We have 83 million subscribers, 180 million users, etc., etc., and we're also available in 65 uh, different markets across the globe. Uh, my team, uh, we're specifically focused on matching users and uh, uh, creators. So you can imagine that on the one side we have, you know, a billion users or, or whatever amount, and on the other side we might have, you know, five million creators. So the problem is, how do you match those together in an optimized way? So you know, both creators are happy and users are happy at the same time. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm not doing this myself, so I'm uh, running a team of 230 people who are all kind of engaged and working on this problem. And what we do, uh, uh, the team and I, we're basically trying to do three things uh, for the world. So number one, we're trying to make it easier uh, to listen to music. So. If you think about um, kind of the original uh, story of Spotify, was very much a self-serve type of a platform where you would come and basically have to create your own playlist, handcraft them one by one, adding a track, etc. Uh, users really thought that was an amazing service. They were really happy about that, but at the same time, we're kind of shutting out a lot of people who don't have the time, the energy, or the, the skills to be creating a lot of playlists for themselves. So what we're trying to do is to change that experience so you don't have to do all that hard work. You can come to Spotify, you can get great playlists, great sessions, great stuff without having to do all of that hard work uh, yourself. The second thing we're trying to do is to help you discover and help you find new things. So we think about it as you as a user being on a journey with Spotify and on that journey you get to find new exciting things that you, would, you wouldn't have found other way. So the, the idea here is that when you've been on the service for say three months, you wake up one morning and you realize that all of a sudden you found all these new artists, the new genre, some new podcast, things that you didn't know before that are now enriching your life. And the third thing we're trying to do is also help uh, creators and help artists. So how can we help them become the best version of themselves? How can we help them find the audience that they deserve? So you might be a DJ in Mexico and you're doing all this great stuff, but how can you find uh, fans, perhaps you know, a thousand people in Indonesia, a thousand people in Thailand, et cetera, et cetera, and build up that audience that would otherwise have been impossible to find? So here are some of the products that my team manage that help us achieve that. So we have a home page. When you start the app, we'll recommend to you various playlists that we think are relevant to you. Uh, we have a search feature where you can go in if you want to more specifically tell Spotify what you're looking for. You can type it in and you'll get responses. We also have a lot of uh, playlists and sessions created for you. We have something called Your Discover Weekly. That's a weekly playlist with like new songs that we think that you might be interested in discovering. We have something called Daily Mix, which is a playlist of more your favorite stuff. So if you just want to have a convenient, uh, you know, pleasurable listening experience, you can go there and you'll get familiar stuff. We also have something called uh, Your Time Capsule, which is kind of fun if you want to go back in time and listen to the stuff that you would have been listening to a uh, long time ago. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, how it works, uh, what's going on under the hood. 
So you could think about the Spotify stack as a stack with three different layers. And there's machine learning and, and data science going on in all of these three different layers. The first layer in the bottom is essentially the data and the information. And here you'll find stuff like you know, playlists, user listening information, user age, all those kind of things. We also have a lot of data about the content. So we'll get information from the labels, but we will also download information from the web, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, lastly, obviously, we also have the audio uh, profile itself of the actual music. And here we'll be using a lot of machine learning techniques to clean the data and remove errors, and et cetera, et cetera. And there's lots of examples. Like one silly example is that the release year that we get from labels is often wrong. So we have to do like a, a machine learning to, to clean that up and kind of get the release years in, in shape. In the middle box, we have a lot of shared models that basically are used by pretty much all the recommendation features we have. So basically, we have these central teams that build these models and maintain these models for everyone else. Some examples here are uh, affinity. So you could basically ask, like, you know, how much does this user like this artist? Or what are the favorite artists of this user? Or um, how much does this user like this track? We also have uh, embe embedding spaces for similarities. So how similar are these two artists? How similar are these two tracks? Or give me 10 artists that are similar to this artist. Give me 10 tracks that are similar to this track, etc. And we also have clustering services. So you can send in, here are 20 artists. Can you cluster them for me? Or here are 100 tracks. Can you put them in clusters for me? So these are then all like a, a central models, a central things that all the various uh, features will be using. And then in the top level, we have the actual features themselves. So we'll have teams who own those features, they build those features, they maintain those features. And there, there'll be machine learning models as well. So these models are more specifically targeting you know, the satisfaction of that feature. And is this a, you know, a good feature right now? But it will be using from uh, uh, data from all, both of these other uh, uh, levels. Does that make sense? OK, a little bit sense, OK. So now I'll, I'm going to go through a few examples of things uh, that are important uh, at Spotify. So example number one I'm going to talk about is uh, embeddings. Uh, so basically, uh, we're talking about uh, embeddings for tracks, uh, playlists, artists, albums, users, etc. Uh, so, so this all starts uh, with this number. So this number here uh, represents the amount of playlists that we were like uh, using uh, yesterday when we were running this job. So this job uh, runs every day. So this uh, doesn't represent all the, the Spotify playlists. We have a lot more playlists, uh, but we have a lot of logic that goes through and picks the, the playlists that we think are relevant for the training. Uh, and that kind of selection is actually pretty important. So if you train on all the playlists, things aren't going so well. So essentially, it's, it's pretty simple in a way. It's just kind of, you know, guess the missing track in a playlist type of logic. So, you know, we have, we're training on these, uh, you know, 600 million playlists, and we're trying to figure out if we remove a track, which track did we re remove, what is the missing, missing track. And we're using a, a word to vec type uh, uh, algorithm, so not very fancy or very uh, uh, complicated in that way. And out of that, we get this uh, uh, cloud of, of similarities, so basically an embedding space. So in that space, you can ask a lot of questions. You can ask about similarities. You can ask about similarities between tracks, albums, and, and artists. Uh, you can get things that are close uh, to you, a little bit further away from you. Uh, you, can, um, yeah, you can do a lot of stuff, basically. <clears throat> we also uh, put users into this space. And the way that we do that is, is basically we look at your, your listening, like what you've been listening to. So you can pretend that that kind of becomes a playlist. And then we take some kind of average out of that, and uh, boom, you're also stuck in the space somewhere. So uh, 
so, that, so that's kind of how this works. And from this, we can then uh, calculate similarities between users and tracks. And you can imagine then that uh, if we're, for example, doing um, a Discover Weekly, one of the steps in, an, in a long chain of, of steps to create a Discover Weekly will be to look into this space and figure out like some interesting candidate artists and tracks that are like close to where you are in this space, but are at the same time things that you've never heard or seen before. So uh, a few thoughts on the secret sauce behind this embedding space. So obviously this space is you know pretty important to our recommendations, and it's uh, one of the uh, you know one of one of a few core building blocks uh, for our features and our products. So number one is uh, uh, that we have a large volume of playlists. So that's very important in, in making this a, a high quality system. Number two that I think is really important is that this uh, uh, training data was, was created with a lot of love and a lot of care. So it's not just popping a random like, uh, display somewhere and someone randomly clicking on, yeah, whatever, you know, that sounds good. This is users who spend a lot of time putting this together for their own benefit for something they want to listen to and spend a lot of time with. So there's a lot of like care and love behind those 600 million uh, playlists. And the third one is that we, we deployed the first version of this nine years ago. So over nine years, we've iterated and iterated and changed and tweaked and worked on this you know, day after day uh, for a long, long time. So obviously, after nine years, um, something is usually working reasonably well. Uh, I wanted to mention, too, that we also have a similar uh, embedding space uh, built on the audio profiles only. Uh, so you can imagine it's kind of the same question, like uh, a guest the missing playlist, but uh, the difference is that you only have the audio profile as your input. So instead of having the, uh, the tracks, you have an audio profile. And this can be handy specifically when you have tracks that you know nothing about. So maybe there are tracks that are new re released, or there's an artist you don't know that much about, or for some reasons there's kind of like a, a little bit of information. So that was kind of the first example that I want to work, work, walk through, uh, the embedding space that we have. Uh, the second example that I want to walk through is around uh, our homepage. Uh, so essentially, <clears throat> when you start Spotify, uh, you will get into this uh, a page that we call the home page. And this is a page where we recommend to you various playlists and various albums and things that we think are relevant to you at this point in time. So fairly similar to you know, the, the Netflix uh, start page when you come into Netflix. This is kind of the same idea. So we actually uh, rebuilt this system fairly uh, recently, and it's like one of the major projects that we're working on right now. And we deployed this originally sometime in, in April, May, I think. So here's a system that we call BART, which is a brand new system we've built. And, and this BART system is basically you know, a recommendation system that will give everyone you know, a personalized uh, um, homepage uh, whenever you open your app. Uh, so this new system, uh, we're taking into account uh, a lot of different type of inputs. So it's not only your music taste and you know what kind of music you like and what your favorite artists are, but it's also things like you know which device are you on, what time of day is it, you know uh, uh, what's going on in the world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <coughs> so we're making this system, uh, trying to make this system context aware. So that also means that you know, if you open the home page a few different times a day, it will likely look quite different because it's changing with all of these context uh, parameters. So essentially, uh, uh, what you can imagine here is that the, the problem is that we have all of these shelves of content, and we're trying to figure out which shelves should we be showing to you at this given point in time. And we're also trying to figure out for each shelf, which cards should we be showing to you at any point in time? So each shelf have kind of a confined spaces of cards. So you know, one, one shelf, uh, uh, to make an easy example here, could be uh, a rock, for example. And then the possible candidate sets are like playlists that are relevant for, for a rock shelf, so to speak. And what we wanted to do here was to do a um, 
uh, an exploration and exploitation type solution. So we basically built a, a multi-armed bandit solution here. And you know, many of you are probably familiar with this, this concept, but the idea here is that you know, if you're very sure about uh, uh, the, the piece of content that you're trying to recommend, then you'll either just recommend that piece of content or you'll choose to ignore it and, and kind of throw it in the bin. But if you're a little bit less sure of this piece of content, uh, we want to do some uh, exploration instead so that we can learn more about this content. And the reason why this is important is because uh, uh, recommendation systems tend to become very biased towards uh, themselves, so to speak. So, uh, you know, this, the, the music that you recommend or the content that you recommend is the content that people click on and therefore you'll tend to recommend it more. So by doing this uh, uh, exp exploration uh, uh, piece, you'll get to make sure that you learn about other potential con content candidates so that you're not kind of trapped in this little bubble. So essentially, uh, we use this uh, uh, really simple uh, thing called Epsilon Greedy, and, and the way it works is, is pretty simple. So uh, you, you flip a coin and you, you kind of decide a distribution, and uh, depending on the, the randomness here, you, you either um, pick a, a random piece of content, or you use your uh, recommendation uh, algorithm. And I think right now, on our homepage, roughly 10% uh, will be using random, and 90% will be using recommendations. So that kind of means that every 10 shelf, roughly, will just be put there on random, and similarly, cards every 10 will basically be there on random. Uh, but we're not you know, randomizing across all possible playlists uh, uh, that we have, because it could be a bit weird to have like a you know, a pia piano playlist in a rock shelf. So you first you do the candidate selection, and then you do the randomization on that. So basically, you can imagine here we have the shelves, we have the, the cards. So for each time we're choosing a card one by one, we're doing this process where we're rolling the dice and we decide uh, you know, whether we're going to take a random card or the, the best card. And similarly for each shelf, uh, we'll do the same. So some more uh, kind of information things that might be good to know about uh, the system. Uh, the system is, is uh, um, optimized towards uh, 30 second streams. So that uh, means that if you click on a playlist and then you decide to listen to that playlist and you listen for more than 30 seconds, that will be like a, a win for the recommendation system. Uh, we retrain this uh, model uh, once a day and we retrain it based on um, the, the, uh, the interaction data that we were collecting. And we also built a system to, uh, to de-bias that data for uh, positional bias. So basically, uh, that kind of means that you know, if you click on whatever's in the top left corner, that will tend to be a little bit less worth than if you scroll down a lot and you click on something further down. So that was kind of my second example that I wanted to talk about. And now I'm going to deep dive into the third and uh, the last one here. So we also spend a lot of attention thinking about the objective function. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Discover Weekly and the objective function there. So first, uh, explain again a little bit more what that uh, feature is. So basically, every week we'll be creating a massive amounts of um, daily weekly playlists for all our users and sending those out to all our users. So once a week, every user on Spotify will get a new specific playlist with, say, 20 tracks that we think would be interesting for you to, to discover. So the question here is, like, uh, uh, how do we know whether a user was happy or not? What type of objective function should we have for the recommender uh, that we're training here? So uh, we started to do some investigation here, and uh, we looked at a lot of different uh, uh, signals. You can imagine, you can look at, you know, do you go to the album and uh, view the album of that track? How long did you stay on that album page? Uh, did you add stuff to your playlist uh, uh, from, from that Discover Weekly? Did you add stuff and then listen to it further down the week, maybe like a few days later in the week? So those are interesting signals that we started to look at. 
So the first thing we do, did was kind of look at how we evaluate Discover Weekly today. Uh, and, and today, or before, I guess I should say, we looked a lot at how much streaming time do we get, um, uh, do users come back week on week to this feature, etc. But one of the interesting things we found was that uh, actually uh, the, the metrics we were looking at were, were not really that good approximations for satisfaction. Because uh, if you think about listening time, it, it uh, basically turned out that a lot of users will look at Discover Weekly and they will uh, take tracks and put it in another playlist for later listening, and then they will listen in that later playlist. So maybe they were like super happy, but we didn't see because you know the listening happened somewhere else. We also found that um, some users would come back to Discover Weekly because they found that last week sucked so much, so they wanted to come back to see if this one was better. So week-on-week -week retention was also a, a little bit dubious way to assess whether your Discover Weekly was good. So the, the first lesson learned was that, you know, holy smokes, uh, you better know what you're optimizing for type of, uh, type of revolution. Uh, so, so this was a team that we put together that was a, a multidiscipline team. So we had um, basically a user researcher, a data scientist, and a data engineer who worked together on this project. So we, we did user research studies, we did you know, data science studies, and we, we, we wrote a lot of code using with our data engineer. So the first thing we found was that essentially there are like four main ways that users use uh, Discover Weekly. So there's not just one way. So some examples are that some will put it on and listen to it in the background, while others will like drag tracks into another playlist and listen later. But there were four main ones. And what we found there was that you know, it was hard to just say that this particu particular task is a good signal of users being satisfied, because it varied depending on the goal. Uh, so that was a little bit uh, difficult. And we did find some that kind of uh, worked across all of them. So basically, what we ended up doing was uh, building a, a machine learning model that tried to assess your satisfaction with this week's uh, uh, Discover Weekly. So first, we would take into that model all the interaction data from how did you interact with this week's Discover Weekly? What did you do? What did you uh, uh, not do? Did you listen later this week? Did you scroll? Did you click? Did you dwell on the album page? All that kind of stuff. We also use historical data because we found that what was important was to look at the, the kind of the relative change for each user. So the interesting question is not, uh, do you do X more than this amount? The interesting question is, how much of this do you do this week compared to last week or the, the week before? And the third thing we, we add is that clustering data, essentially classifying which of these four goals that you belong to this week. And uh, what was really interesting is that we found that the last one here was actually the strongest uh, influencer on the, on the model output. So knowing which of those uh, uh, goals that you have as a user or which of those ways is really important for assessing the satisfaction. So what we did here was we trained this against quite a few different targets, uh, but one of them was uh, basically survey data. So we did a lot of survey data and used use that as, as, uh, as training. Uh, and right now what we're doing, kind of the next phase, which we're in the middle of now, is basically building a, a learn to rank model that is essentially, essentially recommending um, uh, and, and trained against this metric. So the idea here is that we can, we can uh, train directly against this metric as a target. So if any of you are uh, users of uh, <coughs> Discover Weekly, uh, you might find out in a few months or so whether this was better or worse. And uh, so that was kind of my three uh, deep dive examples. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is move into just a little bit more high level, talk about uh, things that we're working on right now. Uh, so first of all, uh, we're working uh, more on this kind of idea of how can we, in a deeper way, understand whether the user is satisfied or not. So how can we go beyond you know, optimizing for clicks or optimizing for scrolls, or et cetera, et cetera. So basically, trying to have a, a, a tighter causation between the user actually being happy 
and the thing that the model is uh, optimizing for. So we talked about earlier how we did that for Discover Weekly, but we're also now towards kind of the tail end of doing this for search, uh, doing this for um, our homepage, and doing this for like, you know, playlist listening, playlist consumption in general. We're looking at, uh, you know, how can we uh, optimize uh, towards uh, two objectives at the same time? So this is really interesting for us in a lot of various uh, 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 ways. Uh, one way you can imagine ha here is that you're optimizing for kind of immediate satisfaction and long-term satisfaction at the same time. So immediate satisfaction might be like, yes, these are my favorite tracks. I'm going to be really happy to get them right now. Whereas long-term might be a little bit, but you're going to get bored if that's what you get all the time. So we need to also make sure that you, you're not bored three months from now. So, uh, so here's this idea that you know, we could basically be using uh, algorithms that uh, optimize against two functions at the same time. So that's something we're, we're working on. Uh, here's another example of that where we're, that we're working on too. So you can think about fairness contra like relevance. So in some sense, you know, a, a, a fair playlist or a fair recommendation, and fair here is like fair from an artist perspective, uh, because you can imagine that there could be a lot of fairness uh, problems with like how we help artists uh, build their careers. Uh, and if you do things right, we're finding that you can actually do uh, recommendations that are kind of optimized for both, that are like good for both. So at the same time as like not compromising on the user satisfaction, you can also improve uh, kind of the fairness uh, score, so to speak, uh, as kind of shown in this graph. Uh, we're spending a lot of time working on our voice experience. So for those of you who, who use Spotify on mobile, uh, you can go into, if you click on the search tab, uh, there's a, like a little icon where you can click on that and you can uh, enter voice commands. And here we're, we're thinking a lot about like how to best satisfy those requests that are a little bit more vague, so they're not play this artist or play this uh, particular playlist, but they're a little bit more vague requests. And we're also thinking about and working on like how can a user steer or control that session once it's actually started. So you can go into your voice, uh, uh, sorry, your uh, mobile app and try, try that later on. Another thing we're spending, uh, spending a lot of attention to is podcast recommendations. So uh, we think that uh, there's an opportunity out there to do a lot better podcast recommendations. And here we're really interested to, to understand like, how can we better categorize and classify and understand the content of podcasts through NLP uh, type technologies. Uh, and that was kind of all the things I wanted to go through. And then at the end, I just wanted to kind of end with saying that, you know, what we're really trying to do here is to use all of these technologies to, in a much better way, match together artists and users. And we think that if we do that, we can kind of help everyone at the same time. So we can help more artists to make a living off of, of music. And by doing that, we will create more content that will make music and, and podcast a lot more interesting for the consumer. So maybe, maybe consumers will then spend a little bit more time listening to music, uh, a little bit more time listening to podcasts, and that will, of course, be good for, for the, the, the creators, hopefully also good for the users, and obviously also good for Spotify. So this is kind of you know, trying to, to get all three tides to rise at the same time through this uh, type of technology. So that was all. Thank you, everyone.